Hello there and welcome back to our task 4A of the sample employer set project for the digital T level. Now I left you in the last video on this section here and we just coded and programmed in our trends over time for GBP to US dollars and I have created my data frame in there and I've put my GBP to US dollars data frame in there. Then I've called the trend GBP to US dollars function or subroutine and then I've passed in there my data frame. Okay. Now in the second one here, I asked you, I said you could do this one and all I was going to do then is my trend over time for and then I'll look up into my print statements and I've got the trend over time for the value of US dollars to pounds sterling. So we need US dollars to pounds sterling. So all I'm going to do is make my own subroutine here now. I'm going to say GBP or US dollars rather. And you want to keep the naming conventions consistent throughout because that will get you higher up in a band later on. Underscore data frame and my data frame is going to be data frame. I want US dollars this time. Oh, press the wrong button. US dollars in speech marks or singles, US dollars to GBP. After I've done that, all I'm going to do now is call the subroutine. We're going to pass the data frame, pass the data frame. Now I've created the trend GBP to US dollars data frame in there. Okay, now mine is going to do something similar and there is a more efficient way to do this. I suppose you could use an if statement inside there to direct or pass in just the general um, information that's required. So what I'm going to do instead of copying and pasting this, I'm going to see if I can make this more efficient. It says here trend GBP to US dollars. I'm going to just call it trend plotter in here data frame to plot and just so we know that it's doing it we're going to plot it out there we're going to get rid of this because it's specific we put our generic data frame in here just move that in a little bit and then it will say trend over time and this message here if you want to output a custom message, you can do something like this where you can have a comma and our arguments up here, if we pass in the data frames, the first argument, as the second one, we can pass in something called choice. And then you should be able to work out what choice is doing here. I'm going to pass in, if I am inside my GBP to US dollars data frame, when I call this, this isn't called GBP to US dollars anymore, it's called trend plotter. I can pass in the data frame as before, and then I can say the choice is going to be GBP to US dollars. Now you might be saying, yeah, but John, you've got this thing here called GBP to US dollars data frame, but you're expecting something called data frame to plot. Now when you pass things as as arguments, it doesn't matter what the name is, it only matters about the order. So, as long as position zero here, data frame, that's the data frame, and the second one is the choice, it doesn't matter what it's called. So, you'll notice that I didn't put a variable called choice in there, that is the string choice, which then gets passed into the variable choice, and I use it down here. Now, then, once I've done that, and I've made this generic now. In my second one, I'll take my trend plotter like so. And this time it's going to be US dollars to GBP. And instead of writing this now, I'm going to put this one there instead. Whack it in there. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see if this works or not. So that means I've reduced 
this down now to just one procedure, whereas before I was going to use two, I've made it slightly more efficient in the hope that I'll get some more marks for this. Number seven goes in. Let's test out the first one as before. Now I think title has a problem because it's thinking, hmm, is it two parameters? So if I put in here, uh, str choice equals choice. Let's see if this changes and fixes the issue. I'm going to take this here, chop that out, put it in here, stop the program. I think this might just be caused an issue just because of the comma. Let me see if I can put it all in one string and see if that makes a difference. Run this again. Fingers crossed, everyone. And voila. So it says trend over time for GBP to US dollars in there. So if I stop this, run it again. Put in there seven. This time I'm going for US dollars to pounds. Number two goes in. You see how it says US dollars to pounds? So now it's displaying any custom information. Now you'll notice that when I outputted that before, I wasn't getting the same error as the previous video. Now why is that? You'll see on here, it doesn't give me that weird warning message that it used to give me before. And that, the reason why that's happened is because I gave it a specific format for the dates. And I'll show you how I got around that problem. I did a little bit of investigation and this was the day first equals true part. And that means that it provides a special format because without that, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, you'll see that I get this warning message in here. And it says this may lead to inconsistent parse dates, specify a format. And I looked at this and I realized what the problem was because it says when the format day first equals false, the default was specified, it can lead to problems. So all I did was I just added day first equals true. Okay. And that's it. So I'll just recap what we did there. So I came in, I created trend choice two. I've used the same structure that I did before, but this time I've adapted my subroutine to take two parameters, US dollars to GBP, which is the data frame, and then US dollars to GBP, which is a string. So now my trend plotter, which has been adapted, I've changed the name now. I've got the first parameter being the data frame that you want to plot and the second parameter being the choice that you've made, whether that's pounds to US dollars or US dollars to pounds. Prints the data frame to plot, plots it, provides a string for the title, puts the title, puts the X, puts the Y axis on, and then plots the graph. Simple as that. So in the next video, we're gonna look at trends, value trends for pounds to US dollars, and US dollars to pounds on a combined graph. So we're going to put both outputs on one graph this time. I'll see you in the next video.